Welcome to Inform's Info Session video on sampling and the audit process, part one. In this video, we'll talk about the basic concept behind sampling and interview sampling standards. Be sure to also watch Sampling and the Audit Process Part 2 right after you finish this video. It will cover site sampling standards, documentation sampling standards, and correctly scoring your observations. Let's start with the basic concept behind sampling. When you do a health and safety audit, you can't possibly look at everything a company is doing with their health and safety management system. You want to look at enough of what they're doing to get an accurate picture of the system as a whole and how it's doing. And that's where sampling comes in. So when you're looking at records or interviewing employees, what counts as enough to get that accurate snapshot of the company system? To answer that, you need to understand the science of sampling. Let's look at an example. At election time, media conduct polls on how people plan to vote. Often they will add a footnote on the sample size and accuracy of the poll. For example, based on a sample of 2,000 and accurate within four percentage points, 19 times out of 20. Have you ever wondered if calling 2,000 people is really enough to get a sense of how millions of people will vote on election day? How can this be an accurate snapshot? Think about a shell game with five cups face down. Before you arrived, the dealer placed one ball in the game. So, 20% of the cups are hiding a ball, but you didn't see him do it. How many cups would you have to pick up to accurately guess how many balls are hidden? Realistically, you'd probably have to look under all of them. If you start lifting cups and encounter the ball early and stop, your prediction of how many more balls you will find will be too high. If you are lifting cups and not finding any ball and stop, you might predict there is no ball at all. Okay, so let's set the game up again, with 20% of the cups hiding a ball. But now we have 20 cups. That means 4 of the cups are hiding a ball. So how many will you have to pick up before you can be reasonably accurate on guessing how many balls are hidden? The answer is quite a few, but not all of them. By the time you start passing half and are headed to 3 quarters of the cups, chances are you're getting a pretty accurate picture of how many balls are hidden. Okay, so let's set the game up with 80 cups. Again, 20% are hiding a ball. How many will you have to pick up before you will be able to guess a number of balls that is close to the real answer of 16 balls? The real answer is that once you've lifted about 30 or so cups, your chances of making a reasonable guess are about the same as when you lifted 14 of the 20 cups in the previous experiment. That's why when it comes to sampling, we never just say, look at 20% of the records, or interview 20% of the employees. The percentage you need to sample changes with the size of what you're sampling. With 5 cups, you really need to look under all of them to be accurate. With 20 cups, somewhere between 60 to 80%. With 80 cups, as you start approaching 40%, you're going to be just as accurate. And what if there were 1,000 cups? How many would you have to look under to be just as accurate as you were looking under 30 of the 80 cups? Would you be surprised to learn you'd only need to look under about 15 more, or 45 cups, to be just as accurate? Now, as an auditor, you're likely familiar with the interview standards for auditing. If you take a look at these, you'll see it is designed on the same principles as the cup and ball experiment. So, for instance, if there are 10 or 11 employees, you need to interview 8 of them. If you have 20 employees, you need to interview 12 of them. And if you have 80 employees, you need to interview 21. As a percentage, that's 80% for 10, 60% for 20, and a little over a quarter, or 26%, for 80 employees. If you were to create a chart of the Alberta Partnership's interview standard for the minimum number of interviews, it would look like this. So, that's the basics of sample size. Now, when it comes to interviews, you are not just after a snapshot of the workforce as a whole. You need a snapshot of where a company's senior management, middle management, supervisors, and workers are at. The audit is concerned that each level of the company is engaged as they should be with matters of health and safety. If you're looking at a company of 100 employees, the minimum number of employees you should interview is 23. But to get that accurate picture, the standard also says you want to interview both new hires and experienced workers. 
You want to capture multiple departments, workers from different shifts, and from all the sites you are visiting. If the company is in multiple provinces or has more than one WCB account or industry code, you want representatives from all of these. The e-compliance audit tool has always provided the minimum number of interviews required. However, e-compliance has now added a little tool that can help you plan this in advance so you get a really good representative sample across multiple sites and multiple company levels. With this new interview sample planning tool, you create totals for each level of employee across multiple sites while it keeps tabs on your overall totals. This will ensure that you know exactly how many of each type of employee you want to get interviewed at specific sites in order to get a representative sample. This brings us to the end of Part 1. Be sure to watch Sampling and the Audit Process Part 2 next. Oh,